Hello, everyone. My name is Professor Sean Fadden, and I have the distinct pleasure of being your guest lecturer tonight. My discussion today is going to be on my experience and studies uh, with the healthcare industry. Before I begin, who here has received some sort of healthcare service? Good, most of you. I hope so, as I expect most of you were born in the hospital. And uh, of the class, who here has health insurance? Okay, great. Thank you. Well, that's what I want to discuss with you today, the state of the healthcare industry. In particular, I want to explore the current state of healthcare costs and the role competition has played in driving up those costs. Uh, our discussion will also explore the future of healthcare strategy and how new reimbursement strategies and methodologies are changing how healthcare providers develop their strategic plans. Our discussion will also explore the future of healthcare strategy and the role of whether or not more or less government regulation is the solution. And finally, we'll conclude with the ultimate question, is healthcare a fundamental right? Before we begin, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been in healthcare finance uh, my entire professional career, and I come by honestly as my father and mother are both in the healthcare profession as well. I didn't go the medical route, but I knew I wanted to work in healthcare. I'm currently the Vice President of Finance for a small rural hospital in Brain, Colorado called Platte Valley Medical Center. We are a nonprofit uh, level three trauma center and stroke center. Um, but enough about me, let's go ahead and jump into today's discussion. So first off, is, healthcare, is our healthcare delivery model broken? This is a pretty large and bold statement to make, but one that has been made more frequently as of late. Why has healthcare become such a hot topic? Maybe it's because on average, Americans spend $5,000 more per person on healthcare than other rich countries do, yet outcomes are not any healthier. Or maybe it's because one in four US adults know someone that can't afford their healthcare bills. And of those, 62%, almost two thirds, have some form of insurance. And in 2014, medical debt was the number one cause of bankruptcy in the US and 40% of Americans have debt related to medical illness. Um, and although healthcare costs have slowed in 2017, total healthcare costs in the United States was still 17.9% of GDP, whereas comparable countries were spending closer to 11%. Okay, Professor, we get it. America has high costs for healthcare, but why? Well, there are a lot of different factors that are playing influences on the cost of, and why costs in America are so high. But one key driver is competition. But what, what about competition in particular? Well, we know in other sectors of the economy, competition improves quality, efficiency, spurs innovation, and drives down costs. Healthcare should be no exception. So why hasn't the forces of competition reduced costs and improved quality? Well, remember Porter's five forces of competition? Uh, which are threat of new entry, buyer power, threat of substitution, supplier power, and competitive rivalry. It's long been viewed that these forces have been minimized due to the large role of government regulations and on reimbursement and the seemingly limitless demand of, of health care um, and the need for local providers. There has been also high barriers of entry for any new threat and, buy, and buyer power has been limited due to the consumer's inability to substitute goods. In many markets, healthcare providers like hospitals and insurance providers were able to dictate prices due to lack of competition, thus driving a more of a monopoly market. However, as in all industries, the forces are starting to shift and, putting, and they are putting new pressures on the industry. Specifically, new technology has changed and or is changing how healthcare is being delivered, and it's reducing the barriers for new competition to enter the market. Companies like Apple and Amazon are entering into the healthcare space, putting, pre putting pressure on their traditional delivery models. Um, also, traditional reimbursement methodologies are also changing from a fee for service to quality or value-based services. I joke that it, to go into the hospital it used to be like going to a mechanic where you'd always go into one, for one service and always end up paying for more. Well, although this type of reimbursement is still exists, more focus is being placed on quality outcomes, meaning reimbursement for services uh, by payers to um, providers are more contingent on the quality and the outcomes 
of that care versus just the actual volume of the service provided. Uh, this is a major shift in how providers plan for future growth and their strategies have also been forced to shift with this change in reimbursement methodologies. Um, the focus traditionally has been on um, expanding and growing market share and uh, ultimately the financial statements and the outcomes related to that, uh, related to their services. Don't get me wrong, market share is, and financial statements and how uh, balance sheet performs is still important. But it's not just about building uh, more, uh, building those uh, strengths anymore. It's about competing on quality and lowering cost. Um, this is because one main driver uh, for reducing costs is the increase in price transparency and consumer education. Um, recently, new government regulations are, have come out requiring providers to share pricings for services that are traditionally were not publicly available and quite frankly, confusing. Um, this allows the consumers to shop for their elective procedures and with the advancement of technology like telemedicine, more consumers can have access to healthcare in areas other than their local markets. But one of the questions I have is why did it take that the increase in competition and the advancement of technology to force providers to compete on quality? When really, I feel like that should have been the goal all the while. I believe many in healthcare space develop strategies that de-emphasize the service um, and outcomes and emphasize the traditional metrics of success like market share and financial strength. Um, an example of how strategies change due to financial goals is how the now for-profit insurance company Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, which uh, is the first insurance company in America, uh, went public in 1993 um, when they did, the Blues operated with a medical loss ratio of 95%, meaning 95% of all premiums paid to the company went to pay for medical services to their uh, consumers. However, uh, seven years after they went uh, public, uh, and so by 2010, their medical loss ratio had decreased at 65%, meaning they were paying uh, just 65% of all premiums back to some sort of medical services. Um, this phenomenon occurred across all for-profit insurance companies until the Affordable Care Act was instituted, mandating that insurance companies needed to have a medical loss ratio of 80 to 85 um, percent. This regulation was really designed to reduce premiums by individuals with insurance. So my question for the class is, uh, given this information, do you think this type of regulation is beneficial to the industry? or does it infringe on the rights of an industry to compete in the free market? And then also, what about the hospitals? Aren't they part of the problem too? Both for-profit and non-for-profit hospitals are required by law to stabilize any emergent patients. So no patient can be refused service when they enter a hospital. However, for-profit hospitals are allowed to discharge patients or discontinue care if that patient is unable to afford um, the services. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, under the traditional fee-for-service model of reimbursement, hospitals were incentivized to provide services to patients, even if those services were not medically necessary. This drove up the costs for both uh, of the care for both patients and for the insurance companies. So what's the solution? Speaking in generalities, there are three main um, ideations when it comes to solving healthcare cost crisis. <clears throat> One is more of a market-based approach that emphasizes a universal health refund that transfers all government tax and spending subsidies to ordinary citizens every year with no strings attached other than the requirement that it be used for healthcare. The other proposal is to move to more of a universal healthcare coverage for all citizens, meaning all citizens, regardless of social and economic status, would have the ability to access healthcare. Uh, these models are similar to some of the already established models um, in other uh, more established countries. Um, the third model or third option really is a, more of a hybrid of both uh, private and public insurance, similar to what we have now. Um, uh, my question then to the class is, after hearing all this information, should we expect that continued advancement of technology and the increase in competition 
be the main drivers to reduce the cost of care for American citizens? Or should we really look to change how the government regulates healthcare insurance? Um, and that be the main focus for how we would reduce costs. And also, what other proposals would you have? Um, in conclusion, there are many factors to why healthcare costs are higher in the United States. And there are many different ideas on how we reduce costs. I've really been talking specifically around competition and how different market forces are changing, how uh, providers are changing strategies on, and focuses of how they are going to deliver care. But whether or not you uh, believe in more or less regulation, there still is that fundamental question that has to be answered. Is healthcare a right to all, or is it a service that should be provided? The World, World Health Organization argues that uh, healthcare is one of the fundamental rights of every human being. However, America is still a nation that has many citizens uninsured which limits their ability to access healthcare. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree with the World Health Organization or do you believe healthcare is a service? I uh, really appreciate your time tonight and I uh, look forward to our dialogue uh, later uh, on the world class. Thanks all, appreciate it.